In case you haven't noticed, uh, there is a problem in the economy. Uh, and here we are in California. Uh, it seems quite far away. On Wall Street and in Washington, the problem seems to be reaching a crisis dimension. But it's not far away at all. Uh, the problem is reaching all corners of the world, in fact. And what happens over the next week in Washington, and I don't give it too much more than a week, the Senate and the House are being pressed to make a decision as quickly as possible, is going to have repercussions not only around the world, but also with regard to the future of capitalism. Because we have not seen a crisis like this, a meltdown, if you will, like this, since perhaps the 1930s, but many people who are expert in financial history say even the 1930s are at least qualitatively different than what is now happening. Well, Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Fed, and Hank Paulson, our U.S. Secretary of Treasury, spent last weekend talking to members of Congress and trying to persuade them that what members of Congress, Congress ought to do is give uh, Bernanke and Paulson, particularly Paulson, because it would be under the aegis of the Treasury Department, uh, almost a blank check for some $700 billion, but not necessarily only $700 billion, because it could be much more, maybe a trillion, some people estimate much more than that, in order to take the bad debts off the balance sheets of many big banks. And if they, that is Congress, does not go along with the 700 to a trillion to more bailout, then we could have a financial calamity. I got a few phone calls last weekend, indeed starting Thursday and Friday, from members of Congress wanting to know if it was really this bad. Uh, one member of Congress, one senator said to me that that senator had never heard a Treasury Secretary, uh, let alone a Fed chair, describe in terms that this senator had never heard before the ferocity, the danger that awaits us if we do not approve, said the senator, this bailout. Uh, largely, it seems to be true. That is, if you look closely at the meltdown on Wall Street, that has occurred, it is a major crisis, and Wall Street, at least in the initial instance, does need a major infusion of money to ride out this storm. It's like a raid on the bank, a run on the bank. It's like that scene in, remember It's a Wonderful Life? Some of you are old enough. <laughs> where Jimmy Stewart tells everybody who are try who's trying to get the money out of the bank, but your money is in his house and your money is in her house and you can't just get the money out of the bank. Well, this on a colossal scale is a run on the financial system. People seeking safer ground because people have lost confidence. The problem with the Bernanke and Paulson formulation, however, is it's not just a crisis of capital or liquidity or solvency. It's a crisis of trust. People don't really trust the numbers written down on pieces of paper or in digits that are supposed to represent assets. The whole system last week and the week before was in danger of imploding because trust had almost evaporated. And the question is, where is trust going to come from? If we need trust, how to rebuild trust? And is trust going to be rebuilt if and when Wall Street gets $700 billion more assets. If you're a member of Congress, you are, and you're told by the Secretary of the Treasury and the Chair of the Fed, that if you do not do as they say, there's going to be a financial implosion, uh, bigger than any financial implosion you've ever seen, a meltdown of perhaps the world financial markets, maybe the world economy. You, as a member of Congress, facing a re-election, most of you in less than six weeks, eager to get home to campaign, knowing that there is really not much of a leader of the nation because there's a lame duck president whose approval ratings are lower than almost any lame duck president's approval ratings in recent history, 
worried that if you say yes, your constituents are going to think that you have sold out to the establishment, to Wall Street bankers who have been earning zillions of dollars over the past 10, 15 years, and whose malfeasance and nonfeasance and cupidity and stupidity <laughs> have got us into this mess. Many of your constituents are going to be furious. They already are furious if you vote for it. But if you don't vote for it, and in fact there is a financial meltdown, and if that meltdown occurs before Election Day, and people lose their homes and their jobs and their savings, there's going to be hell to pay on the other side. 